Is this thing recording? Just... Ah, there we go. Hey, what's up everybody? Jay here and welcome to a new video that I'm gonna make. A new style of video that I'm trying to make. Um, an unscripted video. Uh, quite unlike the most of the other videos that I make on this channel. If you take a look back at all my other tutorials and uh, stuff like that, you'll notice that I do a lot of my, or well, I do all of my videos scripted. And so I wanted to try a new style of, uh, or a new approach of making a video. And that is me trying to do a one take. And I've seen a lot of YouTubers do one takes and I'm kind of jealous because I can't really talk comfortably in front of the camera yet. I'm still trying to get used to talking to an inanimate object. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. You know, if you guys like this style of video, if you guys like what you, the more natural side of me, definitely let me know in the comment section below. Um, if there's any improvements that I can make to my videos, uh, definitely also let me know in the comments so that in the future, I can do better content for you guys. So this new style of video is going to be called coffee cameras and chill and the first thing obviously we're going to address is coffee and so the coffee that I have in my cup today is from Ethiopia it's called the Chel Chele it's a washed processed coffee and yeah like most Ethiopian coffees you're going to get some nice floral notes on the on the nose and the taste got a very nice uh, acidity you're getting a little bit I'm getting a little bit of uh, juicy white nectarine taste to it and on the finish um, there is a very light hint of honey sweetness so overall a very very nice coffee to have especially when you start the morning now so coffee cameras and chill. <laughs> the, the second thing we're going to talk about is cameras and camera gear in specific, uh, to be precise. And recently I've made purchases to add to my camera gear collection. If you haven't checked out my camera gear, um, you know, video, make sure to check it out here. I'll include the card somewhere in the corner. But since the time I made that video and now I have made some new purchases and I feel like they don't need to have a video of their own. So I decided, you know, it'll be better just to include it in this video and just to talk to you guys about um, why I purchased them. So the first purchase that I made is uh, you can probably tell in this in front of me here is the microphone. It is the Rode VideoMic NTG and I purchased this sort of like an investment. Now with audio, I find that it's very important for videos. I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube and I can't get over the fact that, you know, the videos, the, the visuals are really nice, but the audios are really lacking. And for me, at least, I find that is it in focus? I can never tell if I'm in focus. The screen's too small. Um, but for me, I find that uh, I would rather have a video that is lesser in quality, but, you know, better when it comes to audio. I, to hear good quality sound in a video is more important to me than, like, you know, stunning visuals. So that's what I, I made this purchase. It wasn't cheap. It was about 367 Australian dollars, but, um, this mic obviously is an investment. It can be used at home on a stand or it could be mounted onto a camera via a hot shoot. So I do have another uh, good quality microphone, the Blue Yeti. Uh, condenser microphone but the problem with that microphone is that it is really heavy and it just it, it's hard to carry around and you can't mount it on a camera so you can't do any run and gun audio with that 
Um, I do have a Rode Wireless Go as well, but the audio quality on that is not that great, especially when you're doing, you know, voiceovers or you're doing just general audio at home. So I feel like this is a nice in-between. You can take it anywhere, you can use it anywhere. And, you know, even though it is a little bit expensive, hopefully it will last very long time as with most audio products don't skimp out on audio products always invest in the most expensive audio gear that you can afford because it'll definitely pay itself off in the future now moving on the next item that i purchased is the uh and you might have seen this in my previous street photography video is the a uh, new filter that I have for my Fujifilm X100V, it's the Black Pro Mist filter. Now, I'm going to unscrew uh, my camera right now. Currently, I have the Black Pro Mist filter attached to my uh, camera and on this hood here. Um, but yeah, the, I bought the Black Pro Mist filter and it's a quarter strength, by the way. Um, I purchased it because I've been seeing a lot of... Uh, photographers or street photographers using this uh, filter to take photos with. Uh, I knew that these kind of filters work really well with video, but I wasn't really sure about um, how these filters will work with photo. But I found that, you know, you know, from their photos, they look really nice. They had an, a, a, a more dreamlike look to them. So I thought, you know, why not? I'm going <laughs> to, again, an investment, right? and buy one of these filters for my X100V. And I was pleasantly surprised. I really, really liked the look that came out of these, um, with, with this, using this filter. And you can probably see the videos that I took at night with this filter attached. Um, it makes everything more dreamlike. It makes the lights more blown out and more, you know, it has a nice halo around them, a bigger bloom whatever you call it um but yeah so very very good investment i highly recommend buying one of these black promis filters especially i think if you are in the market if you're if you want to shoot um portraits <clears throat> in in sunlight and also if you want to shoot nighttime photography and get that more cinematic film-like look um i highly recommend this this uh filter um i also want to add and also want to do a shout out to a guy on Instagram. I'll link his uh, handle somewhere on the screen above. And he actually told me how to properly attach a filter to the square hood that I have here. Now you can see the filter is right now is attached to the square hood itself. Previously, uh, it was kind of like you had the, the lens adapter for the filter adapter on the X100V. And then I would put the filter on in front of the lens adapter and then I'd put the square hood in front of that but he told me that you can actually fit the filter inside the hood itself so you can save a couple of millimeters um, on the on, you can actually save a couple of millimeters and that to me was a new a big deal and I'll show you how to do it real quick if I can actually manage to to get it going I have the tool here so square hood when you buy the hood it comes with a little tool and you can see that there's like little screws you can't probably you probably can't see it but there are screws on the side here that you kind of untighten um, I'm just gonna try and do this as quick as I can to save time so you untighten these screws oh my hands are shaky and the filter pops out like this now before you before installing this filter and when you first get this hood it comes with a little kind of filter ring inside the hood so it that actually slots inside here like so and it was held in place by the screws so all you have to do or all I had to do was unscrew it and then pull this little filter thread out like so and that once removed you can then just go ahead and pop this filter inside and you know it fits really snug inside there and once that's done all you need to do is screw it back in 
and then you can screw it onto your camera. So thank you, Mike715, for telling me this because otherwise my camera would have looked a lot more ugly than it should have. Um, because my camera body is silver, <laughs> like because my camera body is silver, having like a black filter ring around it just kind of detracts from the look of the camera. So now, well, you know, I got to actually fix up the screwing uh, of this, of this square hood, but I'll do that later. But now it looks a lot better. So thank you very much for letting me know. Uh, very, very helpful indeed. Okay, so those were the two kind of main purchases that I made in between that time. So now I want to talk about something a little bit different. Fujifilm has just announced a new camera called the X-S1 and it's going to be made available to the public uh, sometime mid-November. And I'm pretty excited about this new camera body. I feel like I am very tempted to purchase <laughs> this new camera body um, just to list out some of its specs here I've gotten written down just in case I fumble on the words the XS10 will have IBIS in body stabilization five axis it's going to have a deep grip something that you'd see on the uh, Fujifilm X-H1 I don't think any other Fujifilm camera currently has a deep grip besides the X-H1 um, it's going to come with a flippy screen and as you know for filming videos and stuff a flip out screen is probably very important because I can see myself on the screen right now and I am going in and out of focus I don't know why this camera is wigging out on me but it has a flip out screen and it can shoot 4k 30p continuously for 30 minutes at 8 bit 420 now that is very important for me because i do i did mention in my previous video that i wanted to uh, invest in a new camera uh, for video and so 4k 30p 8-bit you know 8-bit's not the best but you know it, it it is good enough that is very important to me so with all these features and the most important thing actually is that it is a mid-range priced camera in the Fuji system. So a mid-range would be about uh, 1,600, 1,700 Australian dollars. And that's a very decent price for a camera like that. You know, I don't think there are a lot of cameras out there that have, you know, IBIS, a deep grip, a flip out screen that can shoot 4K 30p for 30 minutes um, continuously on the market right now you know obviously sony does have a camera that can probably shoot um continuous unlimited but i'm not in the sony ecosystem and i don't think the lenses on the sony cameras are that great so yeah i'm very excited for the xs10 and hopefully once i have enough funds i might jump the gun and i might purchase the camera so watch out guys in the future i might do reviews on the xs10 so that's the camera stuff done and i want to and yeah it, it's quite a long video right now i better close it up i want to find finalize this video by doing a bit of a shout out kind of thing uh, doing a little bit of a feature of other youtubers on uh on the platform that I have found I really enjoy watching. Now I don't really do a lot of shout outs um, on Instagram. I see a lot of people on Instagram or YouTubers on Instagram doing shout outs there. It's like, oh, go, go check out his, his IG or go check out his YouTube. But I feel like IG isn't the best platform to, uh, you know, feature other YouTubers. I personally don't feel motivated when i see people doing shout outs on on instagram to go and follow them i feel like doing something on youtube making a video about it is more personable and is more you know kind of it makes it 
has a bigger effect on the community than IG does. So I like to begin by shouting out the first um, photographer and his YouTube is Kebs Kayab. Yab, Kayab Yab, Kebs Kayab Yab. Sorry if I like, you know, massacred your name. But um, yeah, he's a photographer based in the Philippines. He has a Fujifilm camera or he has multiple Fujifilm cameras. And I like his photography because it's, it's obviously, you know, these are all photographers based around the world and they all have their own unique approach to photography in their own locations. So I really like his photos because they focus more on shadows and highlights and he has a very good attention to colors as well. So, you know, and he does, you know, very short and sweet and concise street POVs, which I really enjoy. And it's just a nice video to watch on your weekend when, you know, you're having your breakfast or you're having your coffee like me. and it's just nice very laid back easy to watch now the next youtuber that i want to shout out is alex on streets he actually shouted me out in uh, one of my previous videos he actually promoted that video on his ig so thank you very much for that but alex on streets he's based in japan a very cool guy he shoots you know obviously fuji it's there's a running theme here like all the people that i follow shoot fuji but but he also shoots uh, film as well he's got a recently purchased a Leica camera which I'm very very jealous of but I like his videos because they're kind of like he does reviews of videos but he mixes the reviews with the street photography and he does it in a more laid back more casual way it feels like you're actually uh, going out with him on a shoot and he's just talking to you as a friend so definitely go check his videos out they're very cool now the third YouTuber that I want to shout out is Ivan Chow. Um, he is a fantastic photographer based in Hong Kong and he has Fujifilm cameras but he also shoots Leica as well. You can kind of see a running theme here with the Leicas. <laughs> a lot of YouTubers nowadays that I'm following are using Leica and I think that's a bad thing for me because I'm also slowly getting an addiction to like cameras this is not good anyways he shoots fujifilm he has a leica oh he owns leicas and his photos are in general just very very awesome they depict uh, hong kong just everyday life in hong kong and um one thing that I do want to say about his videos is that they're very, very well produced. You can see, you can see the amount of editing that goes into making each of his videos. And I really do think that he deserves a lot more views and a lot more followers than he has currently. So go check him out. You won't be disappointed. Um, and tell him I sent you here. I sent, you, I tell him that I sent you there. <laughs> very very good photographer go check him out and the last youtuber that i want to shout out today is zane reza sorry if i massacred your name again he's a uh, photographer based in the uk um, he obviously shoots fuji <laughs> he's got an x100v very nice and he also has a lot of film cameras that he likes to shoot with um, he is a very laid back person and I really like watching his videos because they're a lot more casual, kind of like Alex. He, he, he's a lot more natural the way he talks in front of the camera, something I wish I could also do. Uh, but yeah, he does a little bit of everything, sometimes street photography, sometimes portrait photography, um, sometimes reviews on camera gear. And I find that the way he shoots his street photography is very similar to myself so that's why i kind of really enjoy watching his videos because i kind of see myself also doing those kind of things if i ever was outside so all these four photographers are the ones that i'm currently enjoying a lot on youtube and i feel like if you're watching my videos if you're watching the tutorials that i make 
and you're learning a bit more about Fujifilm cameras that you should also check those photographers out too because it kind of gives you a fresh perspective on how they shoot and sometimes if they're shooting with the X100V or a Fujifilm camera it's very interesting to see how they use their cameras and obviously definitely don't feel free to you know comment on their videos and ask them about fujifilm if you want to learn more about the camera system because i'm sure they all have their own unique uh you know feedback they can offer you when it comes to the fujifilm cameras so that about wraps things up for today i hope you guys enjoyed this really long video sorry about the toilet right now someone's in there and uh I will see you guys in my next video, which will be scripted and which will be a lot less dragged out and long like this one. And hopefully I didn't stumble too much and hopefully I'm not as awkward as I make myself out to be. Anyways, I'm going to end my video here before I start rambling on about useless stuff. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye.